Hello, this is Tom Noyes, and I thought I'd give a quick chat today on global clearing and settlement. Payments are a complex business, and given that there's not many degrees I'm aware of and how payments actually work, I thought I'd go through an example today of how payments flow internationally. Uh, the implications here are relevant to both uh, international payments, which is the subject of um, the, the, the uh, animations here, but also any kind of payments that are going across proprietary networks, whether domestically or across borders. In this example today, we'll take a look at a, a bank customer in the United Kingdom uh, trying to send money to a, uh, a client in Australia. Each country has its own domestic clearing and settlement system. In the United States, it's uh, the clearing house. In the United Kingdom, it's BAX. And in Australia, it's run by Cardlinked uh, or, or BPay. Uh, let's assume today that uh, a, a, a business in the United Kingdom <clears throat> wants to send money from the UK to Australia. Now, in each one, in this, this example, we're, we're going to look at how SWIFT plays a role. SWIFT is not a clearing and settlement system. It's really just a messaging network. It's a common infrastructure that banks can use uh, in order to communicate with other banks. Now, in order for the, the payment to be affected, clearing and settlement accounts are still necessary for the banks to move money between one another. And hence, that's the correspondent banking relationship internationally. For example, at Wells Fargo, um, has correspondent bank accounts in many banks in Latin America. And similarly, the Latin America banks have correspondent bank accounts with Wells Fargo. At the end of the day, there's a settlement of funds. Let me make sure I reinforce. SWIFT is, has no settlement of funds within SWIFT. It's just a common messaging system where uh, payment instructions are sent to, to member banks. So here are two companies. And uh, company ABC initiates the, the transfer to, let's say, it's Lloyd's Bank. Lloyd's subsequently sends uh, the message to SWIFT where Lloyd's has a correspondent banking relationship with another bank. Let's just say it's ANZ. In, in Australia. Uh, now, the, uh, the destination for the beneficiary for this payment is company XYZ, who banks at another bank, perhaps uh, Westpac in Australia. Domestically, ANZ would send the money to be, uh, through its own domestic clearing and settlement network into uh, the, the Westpac account of company XYZ. That's how it's supposed to work anyway. And uh, as you can see through the routing here, there's many, many different points. So it's, it's a quite an expensive uh, process as, uh, as each one of these uh, hops, there, there are fees involved. And the coordination becomes much more difficult if everyone's not a SWIFT member or if the, the destination country and beneficiary or in a less mature has a less mature banking infrastructure. Errors can occur in multiple places. In many cases, it's not until the beneficiary complains that they haven't received the, the payment that even the tracing of the status of that begins to take place. And where is the money? And which settlement account? The domestic settlement account, the, the correspondent banking account, or uh, with it within the bank of the beneficiary. Of course, this gets much more complicated when time zones come into play. And also, there's, there's, very much, there's no concept of guaranteed delivery, as each one of these networks have different um, uh, windows in which processing is done, uh, as well as uh, clearing rules um, and even uh, settlement rules with their correspondence. And as a side note, SWIFT does let some large corporates connect uh, directly to them. Important to note here, perhaps, 
some of the advantages for large corporates of, of using a global banks like Citi, GTS, or, or Barclays GPU or HSBC, and that, for example, Citi has bank, banking uh, licenses in over 130 markets, and it uh, directly connects to the local payment infrastructure. And it also has fund, settlement funds in market to affect that payment uh, real time if necessary. Um, I said city in, in the uh, call this um, global net settlement uh, looks at each market and keeps the funds necessary uh, to settle uh, ba based on its, its history and, and working with the corporate accounts that it has. Um, and in this city is able to charge FX fees, of course, where they don't incur any since the money is already in the market. Now, as you could probably see, uh, in, in it, the concept of least cost routing uh, should consider not only the cost to route the payment, by, but the speed by which it's routed. In this example, if we have a customer in the uh, United States trying to send money to Cameroon, uh, we have multiple routes that the payment could take, uh, depending on the multiple correspondent banking relationships and the payment networks of each of the participants. And the cost of payment, again, depends very much on the route in which it takes. And of course, we'd all like to avoid routing through networks that have a high degree of errors. Now, I think I'll just end here. And uh, I think it, in this international example, I think we can also see um, the uh, the analogy of what it would look like in the United States to operate across multiple clusters of networks in order to achieve uh, a clearing and settlement uh, a process. Let's hope this is not where we end up, especially this year. Hope you enjoyed it.